Hello and welcome back to our plumbing series. I'm Joe Carswell and this lesson is one of many about plumbing materials. This is about copper. Let's get right into it. Welcome to our channel. By now we've loaded almost 100 videos onto YouTube so that anyone can have access to structured trades training resources. We are really trying to grow this channel and the best way for that to happen is for you, the viewer, to subscribe. Also, if you learned something from these videos, don't forget to click like. So thanks for your support. Let's get back into the lesson. I've got probably 20 parts here to go through. This is just the beginning with all of this uh, materials conversation, but let me go ahead and start with our copper pipe and why we use this as a material. So copper uh, can be identified by its color. It is a soft metal. You'll see it in several different colors. So here we have a polished copper, which is a very bright, almost pink or orange. And you have on this side, a very dulled out or weathered copper. The good thing about copper is it lasts a long time. I saw on TV once they uh, opened up one of the pyramids and there was still some copper parts in there. So thousands of years of use out of this material. The problem is it's getting very expensive. So copper is a very traditional material for plumbing. You're seeing it less and less all the time, still available and still widely used by plumbers. Uh, once again, you can identify it by different colors. Here is a sample of copper off the shelf. This is a uh, sort of a very minimally weathered copper. It's kind of flashed. Copper oxidizes. It doesn't rust. Some people think that copper has sort of a rust color to it, but uh, copper doesn't rust. This is sort of a patina that it takes on. Copper is not very corrosive. It takes a long time for copper to corrode. So that's one reason why it's a great plumbing material. The other reason to use copper on your plumbing is that it's safe for our drinking water. All of this lesson is about rigid copper pipe. That is pipe that we're not bending, we're using it in straight runs. There's another whole category of copper pipe that is bendable. This is a softer copper and it can be bent in different directions. This is a good time to talk about tubing versus pipe. I've mentioned both and I often use them incorrectly. So do a lot of other people. A plumber or a stickler plumber will correct you on that. So if you're talking about tubing, tubing is always referenced by the outside diameter of the pipe from one side to the other. If we're talking about pipe, you're referencing the inside diameter. So keep that in mind and I promise you I will get it wrong probably before this video is over and through many others, but it's a common misconception in pipe and one that we should work to correct. So some common pipe sizes you'll see in copper are, I'll, I'll show you three. Half inch copper, I have three quarter inch copper, and I have one inch copper. Inside of a building, these are probably the most common sizes that you'll see. Of course, copper can get smaller. You can end up with a 3 8 quarter inch on this end, the smaller end. You can end up with larger, inch and a half, two inch, and they can go bigger depending on the demand of the system, right? It all has to be designed, but in a, a residence or a typical building, these are the three sizes you'll see, half inch, three quarter, and one inch. There are three types of copper pipe that you'll see as well. They're called out by a letter of the alphabet. You might see type K, type L, or type M. Type K will have the heaviest wall of all the pipes. And what I mean by the wall of the pipe is the thickness of the outside of this pipe. And I don't know if you can see this. I have here a type M, which is the thinnest, and I have a type L here. If I put them next to each other, you might be able to see that this type M is just a little thinner than my type L. If you go to a type K, it's even thicker than my uh, L. I don't have a sample of that here today. And most of your type K is found in commercial uh, installations. You'll see a lot of L and mostly M in residential building. So there's the basic on our copper pipe. Uh, remember though, copper pipe is straight and we need to run it in all different paths in our structure. So we need something to help us turn corners and make that path. That would be our fittings. And I'm going to go through uh, some 
simple fittings one at a time, starting with our end cap. Our end cap is a very simple fitting that will literally cap the end of a pipe. So we have a half inch pipe here. I have a half inch end cap and it fits over the end. If we need to end that run or stop a branch of pipe, that's the way you do it. We would solder that and seal it up. The next one is a coupler. And a coupler would be a fitting we would use to connect two straight pipes in a straight run. So I have a pipe that comes in from one side, slips in here, and then a pipe that comes in from this side, slips in here, and it makes a connection between the two. You can't see this, but there's a small notch on the inside of this fitting to, that will stop the pipes at the appropriate place. It's really important we get that full connection between everything. So make sure that you bottom out your pipes and your fittings. You might need to turn a corner with a pipe and you would use a fitting called a 90 degree elbow. This makes a right angle turn and when we put our pipes into it, they will carry that turn and we can change directions like that. You might not need to make a 90. You can use a 45 degree elbow and it will turn a lot less. So this is a much larger angle for your fitting. And when you attach this to your pipes, that's a much more gradual turn. And if you think about all the paths that we have to run in a building, it might be a 45 or a combination of 45s that gets us to where we need to go. Next up, we have a T and a T will connect pipes together in a 90 degree or perpendicular path. It might be that you need to run uh, two pipes off of one, or it might be that you have a main line that runs this way and you need to run a branch or a connection off of that. So a T will allow you to make this configuration happen. That's all of our basic fittings. And believe it or not, between a T and a 90 degree elbow, a 45 degree elbow, a coupler, and I'll even throw my end cap in here, we can run our plumbing through an entire building with just these options. That's all it takes to get to where we need to go. Also, these fittings come in different sizes. These are all half inch fittings for half inch pipe, whether that's type K, type L, or type M. These fittings will work with all of those types of pipe. If you want to go up to a three quarter inch, you could go to these. So here's my coupler for three quarters. I have a 90 degree, that's three quarters, half inch. Here is my 45 degree, half inch, three quarters. And I have my T for half inch and three quarters. These fittings work on any type of three quarter inch pipe. These fittings work on any type of half inch pipe. And if you want to connect two different sizes of pipes, I even have a solution for that. Here I have my T that has a three quarter on both of these ends, and then it has a half inch on this end. So now I'm connecting two different sizes of pipes within this one fitting. So remember, there were three types of pipe. We had K, L, and M, and the wall thickness changes. The trick here is, is that the outside diameter of any of those types of pipe are exactly the same. That's why we can reuse any of these fittings. What happens is, as the pipe wall gets thicker, it just gets smaller on the inside, so it does not affect the way the pipe fits in this particular fitting. A lot of times in plumbing, we're making transitions. We might be transitioning from size or a connection type. We talked about a T that goes from a half inch to a three quarter. A different type of fitting would be a reducer, and a reducer would not be in this T configuration. It would be more like a coupler. It would be a straight connection. You'd go from a half inch, say, to a three quarter. That would be a common thing to do. We call that a reducer. Another type of transition fitting you might see is one that changes our connection styles. We talked about a solder connection, and that's where we have a pipe that fits it tightly in the fitting. We would then heat it up, solder it, seal it up. On this end of this fitting, we have a threaded connection. This is a male threaded connection, and it will fit inside of a female threaded connection. These are universal threads. We call them NPT. That's National Pipe Thread. It's a standard that's used. This is a half inch NPT male. 
This is a half inch NPT female and the male will always fit inside of the female and we can tighten it up in a clockwise direction. We'd loosen it in a counterclockwise direction. And these threads actually have a bevel to them or a taper. And as we wind it in the male into the female, it's going to become tighter. This helps us with that watertight seal. I have another transition fitting here. This one has a funny name. You would call it a drop ear elbow. And it has a couple of tabs on it with holes that you would screw it to uh, some framing. This would secure this pipe. We're always trying to secure our pipe to keep it in place and keep it from breaking loose and leaking. And it also has a sweat fitting on this side and a female thread, NPT thread on this side. This is half inch NPT. A good example of when you would use a drop ear elbow would be in a shower. This is a common part. The pipe would come up from the valve and then your shower head would come out of this connection right here. A typical shower head would have a screw in or a male uh, NPT thread connection that would go in here. That's a rundown of some basic fittings. And with these different types of fittings, we can get a lot of work done and run a lot of plumbing. There is another whole component that we need to add to this system, and that is a valve. So our valves are put in a system to control the flow of water. It might be that we need to do some maintenance on the system and isolate a certain part of that plumbing. Keep in mind, water is pressurized. And if we turn the valve off, uh, we can then work on that system without it flooding. We can turn the valve back on and we're back in action. Our ball valve is one of our simplest valves. If you see the handle turned in the direction of the pipe that it's installed in, that means that it's on or you have full flow. If you turn the handle 90 degrees to the pipe, you know that the flow is turned off. And if you look inside of it, you can actually see why. There's a metal ball that fits in here and it has a hole drilled in it. So when the pipe is, or when the handle is turned to off, there is uh, the, the hole in that ball is turned the other direction. As I open this valve or turn the handle in the direction of the pipe, that hole gets lined up and now we have full flow through the valve. So just to recap, very simple valve. We have a quarter turn on this handle. That's all we can do. You have a choice. You have either on, which is in line with the valve, or you have off, which is 90 degrees to the valve. It won't go any more in either direction. Next up, I have a gate valve. And a gate valve is interesting because it has a little door in it. And you have to put several turns on a knob to open or close this door. And as, as it closes, it's going to restrict the flow or even stop the flow of water through this valve. This is a very durable valve. You will see it uh, for a lot of main shutoffs to an entire building. And these valves can stay open for a long period of time and then get closed. You might notice this particular one has threaded connections on both sides of it. So we could run a, a number of different materials or fittings into this as long as they had what would be a three-quarter NPT or national pipe thread fitting on them. These also come in smaller sizes or larger sizes depending on the pipe or tubing size that you're running. Just like the threads on our gate valve, our ball valves also can come threaded on both ends. So we've been over some connection types. We started with our sweat fittings, which are soldered. We went to threaded connections, which are NPT threads. There's another type I want to show you. Uh, I've got a compression type of connection here. This compression fitting uh, works completely differently than the other two. So I have parts here. I've got a nut. I have a ferrule, which is basically a brass ring. And then I have a, uh, a, a place to put my pipe in. The way this works is you'll slide these parts onto your pipe. And they go on the, they just slip on the pipe. This is half inch pipe, half inch compression fitting. When we put all this together, we'll tighten this up with a wrench, and I mean tight. We're gonna wind that super tight. And it's going to take this ferrule or this brass ring, and it's going to sort of squeeze it onto the pipe. This is going to make this fitting watertight. We call that, because we're compressing 
that ferrule or ring, we're calling this a compression fitting. The cool thing about a compression fitting is often you can disassemble it later. Our sweat fittings are permanent. Our threaded fittings can also be disassembled, and this one works the same. So this compression fitting is attached to what's called a hose bib. This is a common part that you would see wherever you needed to connect, say, a garden hose or a washer hose. They would thread onto this. We also have a valve up here, a stop valve, that will open by uh, twisting it this direction, several turns this way, will tighten it and close the flow of the water. Another example of a service valve would be an angle stop. So this particular uh, valve is going to combine a lot of things we've talked about already. It has a uh, half inch threads, half inch MPT threads on this side, and it has a compression fitting on the top here. It's going to send the water in a right angle. Water comes in, water goes out, and we would thread this onto our pipe here, and we would send this line out. You would see this for a toilet or any sink. If you looked under a sink, you'll have one running to the hot, one running to the cold. So this angle stop has a quarter turn valve on it. So you have off in that direction and on in this direction. So we've been through our pipes, we've been through our fittings, and we've been through valves. We need some materials to bring all of this together and make it uh, watertight. We're going to need our uh, flux and our solder, two materials, to do what we call sweating. And this process of sweating requires these two materials and a propane torch. So my flux is an acid paste. The purpose of the flux is two reasons. Number one, it cleans the pipe and prepares it for the solder that's going to be melted in. The pipe has to be very clean and this process has to be clean. There is acid in this flux that's going to etch into the pipe and make it as clean as it can be the moment that solder gets heated into it. Then we need to add our solder itself. This is a combination of some different uh, soft metals. They melt at a low temperature. This is very flexible uh, wire, and this wire, when heated, or when the pipe's heated, it will melt into our fitting. So our flux will help that solder flow into those joints. Remember we had a slip joint where we slipped the pipe in. This will fill in all of the extra space in there and seal it up so it's watertight. Our next video is going to cover all of the different steps to make this happen, this sweating process with our copper, our brass, and all of our fittings. There's one more connection type that I want to show you. It's completely different from all the other ones we've been through. I've got a straight stop here. This is a stop valve that works in a straight line. We went over our angle stop and it had a compression fitting on this side. This one does too. It had a quarter turn valve in it. This one has a different type of fitting on this end. It's that push to fit fitting. These are kind of, they're modern. They've been around for maybe 15 years and these are becoming more popular all the time. They're great in certain emergencies or certain situations and they're very easy to use. And I wanna show you how easy this is to install. If I have a pipe that's coming in or coming out of a wall, I can take this valve and I can literally, with a little pressure, push it on. It has a small O-ring in it that seals around the pipe. This is a rubber EPDM O-ring. And the pressure of pushing this on and the way this is made seals this pipe against this washer, and now I have a watertight connection. That's all it takes to seal this up. I'll show you uh, some other versions of push-to-fit fittings. I have a, an end cap here, and I have a three-quarter inch pipe. I can do the same thing with it and just slip it on and pull it to connect it. It's done. This fitting can be reused several times and there's a special tool we can actually remove this fitting. This is unusual for plumbing. Plumbing is not always a multiple use uh, situations, but I can snap this fitting on and I push it up against here. And with a little pressure, I can pull this fitting back off. 
I can uh, reuse this fitting four or five times. And as long as this O-ring inside is in good shape, it will seal every time. I've got another fitting to show you. This is an interesting one. It's called a slip coupler. If you're ever making repairs, sometimes you, need, you can't make room for the fitting that you need to put on. This fitting will actually slide on the pipe and fit into a tight space. So we can slide this on here and we can slide it down. We would connect a, another pipe on this side and then we can, with our tool here, we can slide it back over the other pipe and make our connection to be watertight. So like all of the other fittings we talked about, these push to connect fittings come in all different shapes and sizes. I've got a right angle one here and these slide on and connect. I can make a right angle turn with my push to connect fitting. I even have a ball valve that's a push to fit. This one, like all the rest, will slide onto the pipe and seal and both ends will uh, seal up watertight. Now we have a valve in line with the pipe. So I've been through a lot of stuff here. We've been through pipes, different types, different sizes of pipes, all of the fittings that we need to use, valves that will help us uh, work with this system. We've talked about different connections, that's sweating and threading and push to fit and all of these different things. And hopefully you start to get a picture of how broad this whole thing is and how many parts and pieces it takes to make a plumbing system. The next lesson we're going to get into some of the specifics and process of, about how to put all of these things together. So I hope that makes sense. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.